Welcome to our The China Briefing program. Today, we've got a mix of intriguing stories that span from the boardrooms of foreign firms in China to the vibrant stages of Eurovision. First off, we're diving into a report from the EU Chamber of Commerce in China, which sheds light on the growing disconnect between foreign companies' headquarters and their Chinese operations. This decoupling is not only slowing down existing projects but also putting new investments on ice, as trust and communication lines fray. In a more uplifting note, the Hong Kong stock market has hit an eight-month high, buoyed by the easing of property curbs in more Chinese cities and the whispers of interest rate cuts from the US Federal Reserve. It's a glimmer of optimism for China's economic recovery, and investors seem to be all in. Lastly, we're tuning into the Eurovision Song Contest 2024, where Canada is not just watching from the sidelines but actively participating in the voting. It's a campy, extravagant affair that's about much more than just singing. With Canada's newfound voting rights, we're more connected to the global cultural phenomenon than ever. So, stay tuned for the detailed scoop on these stories. Please continue to watch for more in depth content. In the dynamic world of international business, foreign firms operating in China are navigating through a period of significant upheaval, as highlighted by a revealing report from the EU Chamber of Commerce in China. According to the South China Morning Post, this report sheds light on a growing rift between the headquarters of foreign companies and their Chinese operations. This phenomenon, often described as a decoupling, has made it increasingly challenging for these businesses to steer operational and investment decisions from afar. Over the past two years, there has been a noticeable uptick in member firms experiencing this divide, which has led to a deceleration in ongoing operations and a diminished capacity to seize new projects or investment opportunities within the Chinese market. Additionally, the report draws attention to a significant 26% drop in foreign direct investment into China in the first quarter of 2023 compared to the same period in the previous year. A key factor exacerbating this communication chasm is the dwindling number of expatriate employees holding crucial positions within China operations, which has undermined the trust in information relayed back to headquarters. The urgency for Beijing to restore foreign confidence is underscored as a pressing necessity. In a somewhat contrasting economic narrative, the South China Morning Post also reports a surge in optimism within the Hong Kong stock market, buoyed by China's economic recovery measures. The Hang Seng Index leapt to an eight-month high, marking a significant milestone since August 2015, with a 1.4% increase to 18,800. This surge is partly attributed to more Chinese cities easing property curbs, fueling investor confidence in the sector's revival. The Hang Seng Tech Index and the Shanghai Composite Index also witnessed gains, further bolstered by speculation around potential US Federal Reserve interest rate cuts following disappointing jobs data. This month alone, the Hang Seng Index has seen an almost 6% increase, propelled by inflows and regulatory support for the offshore market, showcasing a vibrant financial landscape amidst broader economic uncertainties. Meanwhile, in the realm of global tech giants, Apple found itself in a public relations quandary over an advertisement for its latest iPad Pro. The South China Morning Post reports that the ad, which depicted musical instruments and other creative tools being crushed into an iPad, sparked a wave of ridicule on social media platforms. Prominent figures, including actor Hugh Grant, criticized the ad for promoting what he described as the destruction of the human experience. In response to the backlash, Apple issued an apology and announced the withdrawal of the ad from television broadcasting. This incident underscores the delicate balance companies must maintain in their marketing strategies, especially when innovative products are involved. These stories, spanning from the intricacies of international business relations to the fluctuations of financial markets and the pitfalls of advertising strategies, illustrate the complex tapestry of today's global economic and cultural landscape. As foreign firms grapple with the challenges of operating in China amidst a backdrop of changing policies and economic indicators, the importance of effective communication and cultural sensitivity has never been more pronounced. Meanwhile, the resilience of markets in the face of uncertainty and the reactions to corporate missteps remind us of the ever-evolving relationship between businesses and the societies they serve. In an era where digital footprints are as significant as the physical ones, a video that surfaced on Chinese social media platforms caught the eye of many, stirring a wave of speculation and intrigue. 
According to the Japan Times, the Japanese Defense Ministry was quick to confirm the authenticity of this footage, showcasing a Japanese naval destroyer, specifically the Izumo helicopter carrier. The video, reportedly shot by a drone and uploaded on Bilibili on March 26, captured the ship docked, absent of any overt military activity. This revelation not only underscores the pervasive reach of technology but also highlights the delicate nuances of maritime security and surveillance in a digitally interconnected world. Meanwhile, as the world races towards technological supremacy, Vietnam is making strategic moves to secure its position on the global stage, particularly in the semiconductor sector. Nikkei Asia reports that the Vietnamese government, through Deputy Minister of Planning and Investment Tran Duê Dong, has announced ambitious plans to lure chip investors. These include offering tax breaks, ramping up research spending, and bolstering infrastructure, notably in power generation. Vietnam's proactive approach comes amidst a fierce competition with neighboring countries like Malaysia for semiconductor investments. Despite the country's commitment to renewable energy, it is increasing coal imports to meet the energy demands of chip and other technology companies. With plans to construct four chip research centers and collaborate with universities for engineering talent, Vietnam is poised to become a significant player in the global tech arena. Crossing continents, the globe and mail brings us closer to the spectacle that is the Eurovision Song Contest. Known for its flamboyance and theatricality, Eurovision transcends the conventional boundaries of a singing competition, offering a unique blend of music, culture, and politics. Canadians, having recently been granted the privilege to vote, are now more connected to this European extravaganza than ever before. With a history of Canadian talents like Celine Dion gracing the Eurovision stage, the contest holds a special place in the hearts of many. This year, 37 countries, including non-European nations like Australia and Israel, are set to compete, showcasing a diverse range of musical genres from folktronica to folk rap. The voting process, a blend of national jury points and public votes, adds a layer of suspense and intrigue, often reflecting geopolitical alliances and cultural affinities. Despite accusations of favoritism among certain countries, the contest remains a beloved event, celebrated for its ability to bring nations together through the universal language of music. Canadians eager to participate can cast their votes via the Eurovision mobile app, contributing to the rest of the world group's tally. From the serene docks of Japan to the vibrant stages of Eurovision, and the bustling tech labs of Vietnam, these stories weave a tapestry of global interconnectedness. Whether it's through the lens of a drone, the strategic plans of a nation, or the harmonious chords of a song contest, each narrative offers a glimpse into the complexities and beauties of our world. As technology, innovation, and culture continue to evolve, they remind us of the endless possibilities that emerge when nations and people come together to share, compete, and collaborate on the global stage. In the vast, interconnected world we inhabit, the mysteries of nature and the complexities of international politics often present themselves in ways that are both intriguing and alarming. From the serene waters of Western Australia's Geography Bay to the contested waves of the South China Sea, recent events have captured the attention of scientists and political analysts alike, highlighting the urgent need for understanding and diplomacy in our global society. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation recently reported on a concerning phenomenon that has puzzled scientists for years, the mass stranding of pilot whales. This tragic event, occurring twice in under a year in Western Australia, has prompted a call for greater funding and support for research into these majestic creatures. Despite the critical need for understanding why these strandings occur, scientists have pointed out that funding for whale research, particularly for pilot whales, has been notably lacking. This is in stark contrast to marine species that bring direct economic benefits to the region, such as the western rock lobster, which receive more attention and resources. Pilot whales, with their deepwater habitat, present a challenging and costly subject for study, often making research funding grants for these creatures considered high risk. However, there is hope that philanthropic funding could pave the way for greater insights into their behavior and how we might prevent future strandings. Across the sea, in a different context but with similarly high stakes, the South China Morning Post sheds light on the geopolitical tensions brewing in the South China Sea. The governor of Cagayan province in the Philippines, Manuel Mamba, has brought to light a stark warning issued by China in 2016. According to Mamba, 
China cautioned that it would not hesitate to attack the Philippines if it hosted forces from another country, particularly in the event of a war. This revelation comes at a time when the Philippines and the United States have recently concluded a joint military exercise, further straining the already tense relations between the Philippines and China. The two nations have been locked in a dispute over overlapping territorial claims in the South China Sea, a region crucial for international trade and rich in natural resources. Governor Mamba suggests that scrapping the military bases access agreement with the US could potentially quell China's aggressive posture in the region, although such a move would have significant implications for the Philippines' defense and foreign policy. These two distinct narratives, one focusing on the natural world and the other on international relations, underscore the complexity of the challenges we face in the modern era. In Western Australia, the plight of pilot whales serves as a poignant reminder of our limited understanding of the natural world and the need for increased research and conservation efforts. The situation in the South China Sea, on the other hand, highlights the delicate balance of power, sovereignty, and diplomacy that nations must navigate in an increasingly interconnected and sometimes contentious global landscape. Both stories, while seemingly unrelated, speak to a common theme, the importance of knowledge, whether it be in understanding the natural world or in managing international relations. In the case of the pilot whales, greater knowledge could unlock the secrets behind their mass strandings, potentially saving countless lives and preserving the biodiversity of our oceans. In the geopolitical arena, understanding the motivations and concerns of other nations could lead to more effective diplomacy and the peaceful resolution of conflicts. As we move forward, it is clear that both the natural world and the realm of international politics will continue to present challenges that require our attention, empathy, and action. Whether it's through supporting scientific research to unravel the mysteries of nature or through fostering dialogue and cooperation among nations, our collective efforts can make a significant difference in shaping a more harmonious and sustainable world. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.